last meeting, I just take a few minutes and tell you a little bit about Eagle Forum and what it is that we do. Uh, we are part of a national organization. We're actually Utah Eagle Forum. Nationally, the, it's, it's National Eagle Forum, and the president of National Eagle Forum is a woman by the name of Phyllis Schlafly. Your, your grandparents, probably, your, your parents and grandparents know who Phyllis Schlafly is. But she started Eagle Forum uh, back in 1972. For at the time uh, that brought people together and started this organization was an issue called equal rights. It was really equal rights for women, and, and everybody's for equal rights for women. Uh, maybe you've heard about the Equal Rights Amendment because it was an amendment to uh, the Constitution of the United States. Um, and, and it sounds great, doesn't it, when you talk about equal rights for women? But when you really looked at what it was all about, it created a situation where a lot of people got involved and worked very hard to defeat it. They weren't working to defeat equal rights for women. They were working to defeat what the agenda was with all of this because it had nothing to do whatsoever with equal rights for women. It had to do with taking away special protections. And because, you know, men and women are different. And this was all about a bunch of radical uh, feminists, radical feminists, and I won't go into all the details of what their agenda was, but it was about uh, saying men and women are the same, should be the same, should be treated the same, women should fight you know, on the front lines in combat, so goes the list. If, if in fact the Equal Rights Amendment had passed, that's exactly what would have happened. Uh, women would be doing exactly everything that men we're doing, and sometimes we don't want to. Sometimes we want to have babies and do other things besides go to war and fight on the front lines. And so uh, there were a lot of issues. And that's that's the beginning of Eagle Forum. Since then, of course, that was just a, a little bit of what the beginning was. Since then, we've been very involved in a lot of things. And uh, here in Utah, Utah Eagle Forum, um, what do we do? Well, one of our main things is legislation. We do get involved with the legislature. And we care about those issues, those things, whether it's a pro-family or pro-life. We are a pro-family, pro-life organization. And so we look at those issues, uh, very broad issues, anywhere from immigration to um, taxes. Uh, obviously, we're very pro-life, and we're very interested in all of the legislation that has to do with the pro-life issues. Uh, pro-traditional marriage, so we're involved in those issues that have to do with traditional marriage and all of the stuff that, that is with that. Um, we care about, about families and about parental rights and about the rights of parents to, to rear their children the way that they see fit. We're involved, very involved in education. There's a lot of issues in education that um, are very important to us and that we want to we speak out on. Education is the big thing in the state of Utah, as it is in every state, and it's a big thing that Fred can tell you that they deal with up at the legislature all the time. A hundred percent, one hundred percent of the state income tax goes to education. And that's not all of what goes to education. That's just state in, hundred percent of the state income tax. And there are property tax and other things that share as they pay for education. So we care about that. We care about uh, what the children are taught in the schools, and we care about the, our rights to, to choose for ourselves how to educate our children. Some of us choose to, to homeschool our children. Others, some of us choose private schools, and some of us choose public schools, and some of us, like me, choose all three. And isn't it wonderful that we can make those choices? And that's what we want to do to make sure that those choices are always there, because there's always somebody who wants to take that choice away from you. There's always somebody who wants to regulate your choices to the point that you don't have choices. One of the big issues right now that we are very involved in in education is called Common Core. I don't know if any of you have heard of Common Core. Big issue. The state of Utah has adopted Common Core. They adopted Common Core without getting all the facts and all the information, and they just did it one day when the rest of us weren't looking. Uh, maybe we don't want Common Core. If we want Common Core, then we want what Obama has picked at his, as his new education program. And so we now find ourselves in a situation where Common Core is, is we have in the state of Utah adopted Common Core. Now, because Obama has been so generous and offered to the, to the states, all the states across the nation, an opportunity to get out of No Child Left Behind. Now, maybe you've heard of No Child Left Behind because we've had it for the last 10 years. 
and it's the education, the federal education program that controls education in ways we never thought would happen. But let me tell you, as a government program, a federal program, Common Core will be even worse. Now, how does Common Core become our federal program? Well, you know, Common Core came about by sorting states all getting together and, and, and developing these core curriculum, and all the states saying, count me in, not all, but almost all of them. And so all these states adopted Common Core. It's harmless. We're just working together as states to adopt this. Uh, you, you know, if you say you're going to do it, you have to do it, but you can get out any time you want. Well, that sounds great, except uh, Obama says, I'll tell you what, if you, if you want to get out of No Child Left Behind, I'll give you a waiver to get out of No Child Left Behind. But here's some conditions. You have to show me that you have a, a better program than No Child Left Behind, and you have to show me that you have a, a program that will, is college and career readiness. Now that sounds really great, doesn't it? He gave you a couple options to choose from. Guess what? One option is Common Core. And the state of Utah said, count us in because we've adopted Common Core. And so we, we filled out the waiver, we sent the waiver in, and the federal government came back and said, well, there's a few little problems here. They gave us three things. Yeah. When you say we, who exactly? The state school board. The, the state school board with the governor. The governor signed on, the state school board voted. They're the ones that actually cast the vote and said, we'll pay common for it. So then they said, now we want that waiver to get out of No Child Left Behind. Well, that sounds great because we all want out of No Child Left Behind. We've wanted out of No Child Left Behind for 10 years. We actually tried to get out at one point. Margaret Dayton carried legislation two years in a row to get us out. And she was able to get some things passed to get us out of a little bit of it. But guess what happened? As soon as she said, Here, here's the legislation, let's vote on it, get out of No Child Left Behind, they said, nah, if you do that, you won't get any federal funds. Well, Fred can tell you, the first time you say, we won't take those education federal funds, everybody panicked and said, no, never mind. We'll do whatever you say. Don't make us do anything. No, just we'll do what you say, because they'll take our federal funds. And so we've been stuck with no child left behind for the last 10 years because we can't get out without losing our federal funds. But now Obama said, yes, you can. I'll let you out. So we said, yay, we'll take it. So we filled out the waiver, we sent it in. The, government, the federal government says, we need three little changes. So they made those changes. I was at the state school board a couple of months ago when the state school board voted on the changes, voted for the new waiver now that included those changes, um, and they sent that waiver to the federal government. Now they've answered all the questions, done everything the federal government said to do, and now we're just waiting for them to say, okay, you got your waiver. What happens? Common Core becomes our new federal program. We no longer have No Child Left Behind. Instead, we have Common Core. What happens when we say, oh, guess what? We don't like Common Core. We don't like you telling us what we have to teach. we got federal government. What you have, we have to teach in math. What we have to teach in, in the English. And now they have the science standards. Uh, but guess what? What will they say to us? OK but you won't get your federal funds. So, not a good thing. It happened behind closed doors. Most people don't even know that it happens. Most people, including the governor, thinks we can get out any time we want. Well, we can today. We won't be able to, probably by the end of the summer, because once the waiver goes into effect, we're stuck. Now, I'm not the only one saying this. I'm not the only one that's upset by this. And I'm not the only one that's trying to get them to back off and to, to not you know, accept the waiver, I'm trying to get them stopped. I talked to Rob Bishop the other day. We talked for an hour about this very issue. And Rob said, you know, I ran around 10 years ago begging people not to adopt No Child Left Behind. He said, the same people right now that are adopt Common Core. I said, don't do it, don't do it. No Child Left Behind will do this and this and this. Oh, no, it's wonderful. The teachers loved it, everybody loved it, until they had to live under it, and they all hate it now. Well, guess what? Rob's doing the same thing now, saying, what are you guys doing? What do you think you're doing? If you think No Child Left Behind is bad, he said, wait till you have to live under federal Common Core four standards from the federal government. As he put it, it, it's the first time ever in the history of the federal government's involvement in education that um, the federal government will control the four standards in the states. And the state of Utah said, bring it on. We can't wait. We love it. 
because they the the school board loves the core curriculum. They want that control from the federal government, and they want all the money they can get. So Fred, the legislature better get us out of it because the state school board's not going to get us out of it. And we're going to live that way. And it can affect everything. It can affect those very choices that I just told you about. And how would they affect those choices? How would it affect a homeschool family? They don't have their children in the public school, so they're not dealing with the core standards. If you look at the testing and the assessments that go with Common Core, you can see how very easily, in fact, in order to fill the assessments as they are building out, see, they voted on all this stuff and accepted this stuff without ever seeing anything. They didn't see these assessments. They didn't know what these assessments were going to be, except for a few people, like the superintendent of the schools. He knew here in the state of Utah. Those very assessments could possibly lead to requirements that all, because that's the way it reads, it doesn't say all public school children, that all children have to take those assessments. And if that happens, that means all homeschool children will have to take those assessments. All, probably, I maybe maybe a religious school, private private school, maybe could get out of. I'm not. I don't know because we're losing our religious freedoms as fast as we're losing our other freedoms and liberties. So it's hard to say. Those are the kinds of things that we care desperately about. I spend a lot of time on this very issue. I do a lot of public speaking on Common Core. In fact, believe it or not, on Saturday I'm speaking at the home school convention about Common Core, trying to tell people, trying to get them to wake up to the fact that this, this simple Common Core that the school board tells everybody how simple it is and how don't worry about it. They just did a presentation to the legislature uh, at last, last month's interim where they just, oh, did this. It's just, it's just, it's a wonderful Common Core and we can get out anytime we want. Even the, 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 the attorney from uh, from the from ledge research during the, the presentation did end it by saying we can get out any time we want as long as there's not funds attached to it. When there's money of any kind <coughs> attached, if you take the money, you have to you lose the freedom. You have to do what they tell you to do when you take the money. So I would say to all of you, you're young. Some of you are starting families. Some of you plan to do that. You don't want to live under this kind of, this, this is not what you want in your future. I've watched over all these years, look, freedom lost and lost and lost, and more freedom lost. What's going to happen when you're rearing your children? And how much freedom will be gone? Now's the time. We can stop this common core thing. You know, there's been, this has been going on for years. At one time it was called school to work. Then it was called outcome-based education. I could go on down the list. Goals 2000, America 2000. You know, I mean, it went on and on and on. And each time a lot of people worked really hard. And guess what? We won it. We, we stopped it. We continued to have a lot of our freedom. We didn't win the No Child Left Behind law uh, fight. And you know where we lost it? I hate to tell you where we lost it. We lost it from the Republicans. Remember, where we got no child left behind. I served on the platform committee at the national convention the year the platform adopted what would become no child left behind. I also served on the education subcommittee for that platform, that national platform. And through all of that, I I argued, I stood up, I ranted, I did everything I could. And, you know, one by one, we lost the people that started out supporting us. And, and by the end, there was only a couple of us. Believe it or not, an attorney from Texas, it was his governor in Texas, who was running for the President of the United States, gave us No Child Left Behind. And everybody said, but we have to vote for it because our candidate wants it. Not a good way to go, because here's what we ended up with. You know, No Child Left Behind, it wasn't called that. When they, when they were doing it in Texas. You know, for the state of Texas, okay, that was fine, because it was the state of Texas making that decision. If I lived in Texas, I would have been against it, but at least it would have been a state program that you could get out of any time. But when it becomes a federal program, and that's what I continually said over and over, and as I said on that subcommittee, the platform committee, as we worked and worked to try to change things, I continually said, this may be fine for Texas, but it's the worst thing that we can do from the federal.